in any web application development, we need to go and provide an interface that allows the user to view certain information. Then, through the web interface, the user can make changes to those displayed information. And finally, the user can click some kind of a button, a save button, so that the JavaScript logic can collect this information, construct it into a meaningful object, convert it into a string, send it across through the network so that our server-side logic can receive all these changes and finally save these changes into the database. So in this session, we would like to go and focus on some quick experimentation in using this AJAX technique, making a put request to the server side right, API controllers so that the data can be sent, right? The data can be sent from our client side and received at our server end. We often use put request when we want to go and apply update functionalities. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have coded at the client end, right? It is not a full functional coding, I'm just experimenting. You notice that I'm using a JavaScript function in order to go and uh, construct some kind of a function having the name called uh, capital letter W, okay? Web form data, which accepts three inputs right which accepts three inputs and once these inputs are being accepted they are all being assigned to their respective member properties okay which is full name emission id and email so this javascript function will actually help us to define a very simple and straightforward javascript object so let's take a look how this one is actually being used when i click the save button the save button is actually having the ID of uh, save button, as you can see here, right? When I click the save button, right, I'm just trying to go and write some very uh, simple code in order to go and construct a JavaScript object having the name of web form data. And within this JavaScript object, with the help of the JavaScript function, I'm, I have constructed right, an object that has three member variables. One is the full name, second is the admission ID, and the third is the email, right? And by this line, I'm constructing an object that contains three pieces of information. So I have wrapped three pieces of information into it, which is Simon123 and also uh, Simon at emu.com, right? I want to go and send this object across the network to the server end. I can't just send this object like that, right? I can't just send this object like that. In order to go and send this object, I need to go and use this stringify method that belongs to this built-in class called JSON, okay? Right, and you notice that I passed in the JavaScript object web form data. It will be stringified, it means that it will be converted into a string, and this is actually web form data in string variable that holds the stringified object. In other words, whatever content inside this web form data in string is well formed enough so that it can be a, uh, it can be some kind of a legal information that can be sent across the network without any fail okay now then let us take a look this is actually a very very simple ajax uh, call command by using the java Great jQuery right library. I'm calling the AJAX method which belongs to the jQuery library in order to make a put request right in to a student controller to a student controller and at the same time I'm actually passing a student ID value which I have hard coded here as two okay which I have hard coded here as two so I'm actually passing in a document scope student ID variable having a hard coded value of two. So in other words, the eventual URL is going to be slash API slash student slash two, right? And the data type is going to be JSON. The content type is application slash JSON, right? And this is the portion that 
actually took up a lot of time uh, for me to get it right right so this is actually the stringified this is actually the stringified uh, javascript object that has the important information simon123 and simon at emu.com wrapped inside it right and you notice that I need to go and also incorporate a very very simple single quote character wrapping it up right before I actually get this uh, Ajax call successfully done okay so let me actually start looking at the web browser right within the web browser I am actually having the update interface ready right and I'm actually going to send the constructed JavaScript object across so let us observe let us observe you notice that I am actually bringing out the network monitoring window right so this is the network monitoring window and I'm going to click the save button so once I click the save button all these code that I have uh, tried to uh, illustrate just now will be executing okay will be executing especially this part here right so I'm actually going to click the save button once I click this save button you notice that uh, immediately the the server side logic is paused at this line the server side logic is paused at this line and let's take a look at the what is sent across the network what is sent across the network so you notice that this one is actually the call right which is read as api slash student slash two right see that so right now i'm going to click on it and let us actually check the header inside the header the content type is application slash json and let us actually check the request payload so you notice that it is actually a string information with the stringified javascript object wrapped inside it right this is the stringified version so i'm actually passing right the information right as a string right as a string right then uh, recall that just now you notice that the server side actually ports at this line because I'm running the entire project in debug mode right and you take a look this is actually a API called put right this is actually an API method called put which is residing inside this student controller class right within the API's folder right within the API's folder so let's have a look what is going to happen if I mouse over the ID parameter you see you get the value of 2 so this value is very important when we want to go and get our server side logic uh, do a good job in modifying or make changes to the correct record inside the database right it won't be able to go and modify the wrong record right okay so let's take a look at this parameter value so you notice that the parameter value is actually holding the string that was sent across through the network so well you notice that the put method has already successfully received all this information but this value string information is not in a correct form so that we can make it to become useful to our code we need to go and reconstruct this string into a meaningful c sharp object in our server side environment so in the server side logic once we actually collect the string we very often use this command we very often use this command in order to go and call the deserialized object method which belongs to this json convert class here so this json convert class is made available after i have actually installed a package right a package that provides the namespace of newtonsoft.json okay so what does this deserialize object for so i am actually trying to go and deserialize it in other words if you want to go and appreciate the meaning of deserialize let me come back to the client side uh, javascript what you are doing here you are serializing it into a string means that one flat line of string right you see you are serializing it as a string so in other words this is actually a when i click this button right you notice that this is actually a 
serialized string right so the the information needs to be serialized when sent across the network now the server side will need to go and deserialize it because yes the string has done its job it was successfully sent across via the network but right now in order to go and make this string useful to our server side logic so that we can extract out the full name the email and the um let me see what was it full name email and uh emission id okay emission id so i need to go and use this deserialized object to go and construct a proper c sharp object okay and uh, what is this for this one is actually just an indicator that right you want to go and deserialize it to what kind of uh, data type so i'll just use dynamic dynamic is basically uh in my own terms and ter terminology is anything law okay uh, so let's take a look what is actually inside this student variable here you notice that the student variable is actually an object right now and you notice that it can actually be extracted out right it can actually be extracted out so if i actually right now uh do a quick watch on this student right let's just say that if i put the full name the value right why be able to extract the full name out which is simon so you notice that i was able to go and extract the simon out so what about if it is uh email right so if i reevaluate it you notice that yes i'm able to go and extract the email out so what about the admission id so if i try do this you notice that yes right i'm able to go and extract the admission id out so this is actually a very quick experimentation on using this uh, put request technique right you build put method inside an api controller right so that our client side logic can make a put request call using the ajax technique right uh, to go and make this update functionality flow done properly and before i end this i would like to go and share one thing asp.net is open source so open source means that when there are bugs when there are important improvements or when the uh when the developer community right collectively clamoring for new changes all these things are happening very very fast paced right they they all happen in a very fast pace so for example right this is actually a, a, a question posed by a developer right uh, in stack overflow how to go and send data right to web api method blah 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 and all this stuff and you notice that in uh, one or two years back right the way that you define a uh, api controller is extending it from the api controller class right you notice that these are actually some of the code which is quite similar to what i have been experimenting just now but right this is open source so and moreover asp.net technology actually also uh, advanced pretty well and stable but you know you notice that there are developers sharing right that the way that you work in mvc4 like this one is actually using the mvc4 okay right right but the way you work in mvc4 is very different from how uh it is done in mvc6 under the asp.net 5 and he will write carefully what are the changes so just now i was actually working on the put right i'm working on the put so you notice that he actually right this author actually tested uh, this is the action method he tested uh, tested all these things right after testing ready right then he monitored the network so same as me i also monitored the network here i monitor the network a lot in order to make sure that uh everything is done properly okay right i monitor a lot so he also keep track on monitoring 
right then after that he also check whether or not the information has been successfully binded to the respective input parameters of the api method right so this is the binding result so if you take a look at mine right so i'm always keep on experimenting am i actually getting my desired binding result if not i need to go and read more because definitely i have some missing concept or i have already got a concept but the concept has already been outdated due to the technology advancement so i have to read and in fact right microsoft also has been very responsible in order to go and show all the important concepts and what are the slight changes every time when there's a new uh, advancement every time when there's a new advancement okay so you notice that they'll say that oh this is how you use the put right and uh, this is you need to go and pass in uh, the api then after that the controller then after you notice that it needs an id here uh, so they they illustrated all the important concepts that i need to go and have in mind and you need to go and read right what other people say right like for example this one what is the difference between dto and poco right dto is called data transfer object so what we are doing just now what um what's constructing a javascript object stringify or serialize the javascript object then after that send across through the network and then reconstruct the stringified uh, javascript object by deserializing it to become a valid c sharp server side object all these things are actually requiring some concept in data transfer object uh, data transfer object uh, foundation okay right and mv6 um, is also slightly different from uh, mvc4 or 5 in the previous right so that's why i have to go and uh, perform this kind of a simple hard coded experimentation to make sure that i have the correct fundamentals right on how to go and do a proper update flow right when i need to provide a web form functionality to allow the user to go and make changes to the database from the browser thank you very much thank you for your time